well hello and welcome to our live crafting session today it is monday the 30th of january so it's our last few days well last two days of january 2022 my name is jenny mccormack and i'm an independent stamping up demonstrator and i'm based in the market town of brackley which is in Northamptonshire here in the UK. Thank you for joining us. If you are, <coughs> excuse me, if you are here with us live, do say hi and uh, let me know what your um, where you're from. It's nice to know who's watching us live at any given time. If you are watching on replay or catch up whether that is on Facebook here or on YouTube and you have any questions or comments feel free to say hi there you can use hashtag replay if you want um, but if you have any queries pop them in the comment section and then I'll be more than happy to answer those sometimes they do slip through the net um, YouTube and Facebook aren't always the best at telling me when there's outstanding comments so do be patient or just slip me another message and let me know if you have any questions so this week we are focusing on celebration we're halfway through our celebration period and this is a promotion by stamping up that runs january to the end of february it's an annual event last year we had two sessions of celebration but this year we're back down to just one so this is your opportunity to get free products there are three opportunities one is by placing an order 45 pounds or 90 pounds and you can choose an item from this celebration catalog and it will tell you whether this is a 90 pound purchase or a 45 pound purchase just by the little circles that are in here so that's one method of getting free product the other is to place a larger order and you can choose some additional um, additional items so for example if you either hosted a workshop or a party with me or placed an order over 275 you can choose this scenic garden stamp set it doesn't particularly show well I don't think on the um, on the printed page on camera um, obviously it's better in the printed page it's a couple of samples here but you get that in addition to any free items and then the final option for free items is to join our team and if you do that, you can choose £170 of product. And then either you can choose this small mini cut and emboss machine and have the whole deal for £125. Or if you already have a die cutting machine, you can have the £170, £170 of products for £99. And there is a limited edition coloured mini cut and emboss machine that you can choose so a number of options there let me just hop on and um, view what you can see just so I can make sure that we're, <laughs> we're seeing the same thing um, so bear with me one second so what I thought I would do I would um, just go through the catalogue now we've covered some of the items already so we have covered the dainty flowers papers and we have covered the adorable owls so I thought I'd better make sure that I'd used all of the other products um, just so that you got to see them in real life well on video so we've done the adorable owls that's this one here I'll pop a link into those if you miss those and we've also done the dainty flowers papers and I have to say, these papers have been the most popular with my customers so far. Morning, Catherine. Morning, Jeanette. 
um, and then we are doing today this one here in the country so it's a, a set of two stamps and it's these two here so um, little scenery stamps and these are perfect for having a go at watercolour and I've got two different methods of colouring in for you today one using our watercolour pencils and the other one using some inks so let's get cracking with this I'm going to do one of each so let's start with this one which is the little scenery this one here and to start with I'm going to use our watercolour pencils and if you have watercolour pencils at home, many people do, sort of thing you tend to pick up and keep hold of. Morning, Michelle. Then um, dig them out and give them a go. So the thing is, because we're using watercolour and water, that's the key, we need a waterproof ink. So you can't use the standard stamping up ink. So normally I would use espresso, as you know because that will run when the water is applied oh okay thank you <laughs> so let's have a look see so i'm just inking this one up and i haven't um put a label on these yet so i'm hoping i'm gonna get this fairly straight i think i just did it in preparation okay so you could also use the Stamparatus, you want a nice um, crisp image here, there we go. So there's the scenery and it's got um, a fence, obviously a hillside here, a little track and some trees, we're going to colour that one in. And while I've got the ink pad here ready, let's just switch that one over and do the little step scene. And this reminds me very much of, you know, a courtyard in France or something. Okay, so I'm just making sure I'm applying plenty of ink. And just going to stamp this one as well. And then I'll do some quick watercolouring. Morning, Nick. You've caught us live again. Excellent. Okay. Right, let's cover up our stays on. So, stays on is our waterproof ink. You could also use an ink which you heat emboss to set it. The main thing is you don't want a water based ink just um, sitting on there. So, we've got two scenes. Let me bring these up to the screen. Hopefully, you can see that one. There's the little countryside scene and the little courtyard with the steps let's do the countryside one first so in order to apply the watercolor and move it around we have a set of three water brushes and they have different nibs so you can only buy these as a set of three we have a fine nib on the right we have a broader nib there and then a medium nib in the middle and I found this broad nib here really good for doing large areas because it's obviously got um, more of a tip and it's um, good for doing this sort of scene. So what you need to have is a cloth at hand so that you can wipe down your um, water painter and for this one I'm going to use some watercolour pencils so I've just got a selection here I've got some blue I've got some greens might use a little bit of yellow on the path and these are all marked with the equivalent stamping up colours let's have a different green as well oh and I probably need a brown or something for the um, for the fence so what you want to do is fill the barrel with water 
you can also just use a small pot with water in and dip this in if you want to but this is a really good way of controlling the water and not getting too much water where it doesn't need to be let's do some of the greenery first and I've got here granny apple green and I've got some garden green and I think I have Yes, an off cut of paper. And this is shimmery white and this works really well on watercolour paper as well. You don't really want to use our normal basic white or very vanilla because that is not designed to soak up the water and it can just buckle. So what I like to do is put some of the colour down, pick it up with the aqua painter and just move it around to get a feel for the colour. Now you can do some colour mixing here as well and you could do this on a a plate or on a um, block. I'm doing it on paper really so that you can see it as much as anything. And then all I'm going to do is apply this colour. Oops onto our area like so oh and it's got this set as well so if you want um, a lot of color then what you would do is apply your watercolor pencil straight onto here and then you can use your water painter to move that around like so and you don't want to get it too wet you want it wet enough to move the color but you don't want it absolutely soaking if you get too much color or too much wet on it um, from the water you can just dab it you could use a kitchen towel I prefer to use a linen cloth okay so let's start, add a mix of colors now and this is quite a small sketch so it's not going to take you too long to color in Like so and this is where using that water painter with the broader brush tip is good because you can cover much bigger area I think yes it would work for winter too absolutely Catherine You can also apply colour from the watercolour pencil straight onto the brush. You can see that. And then you can apply that. So there's lots of different ways you can watercolour. You can also wet the surface and then apply the watercolour pencil. That's another way to do it. And when the pencils come, they're quite sharp. And ideally, for this sort of thing, you want them slightly blunt. You don't want too sharp a point, otherwise it just scratches the surface. So that if that is the case, then just um, pop it onto a piece of card. Now you can keep that card and just reuse that ink as you need. Okay, let's put a little bit here on the right-hand side. Oh yes, blender pens would definitely work as well. Okay, so there's our grassy scene there with a nice mix of colours. I do like to mix those up. You rarely see one colour like so. 
Uh, let's put a little bit of colour in this middle bit of grass here. So I think what I'll do is I've got an old olive pen. What, a pencil rather, I should say. So the other colours I've used are Granny Apple Green and Garden Green. So let's just lay down a bit of colour here on one side and the other. Like so. And then I'm going to have a little bit of brown, I think, on this track. Let's see what we've got. I've got Cajun Craze and Early Espresso. Hi Fran, how are you? I hope you're well. So let's use a little bit of espresso on the sides. Oh, thanks Jeanette, no worries. So I've got espresso there, which I'll blend out and then maybe a little bit of Cajun craze in the middle like so so make sure if you're changing color that you just clean off your water brush just by squeezing a little bit of the water hi Nikki Nikki's just joined us and then I'm just going to blend those in very simply like that go so we've got our track I'll just lift that up so this is shimmery white card so it will absorb the water you want to make sure that it is completely dry before you attach it to your card okay so there's our track in the middle hopefully you can see that all right and I think we need a bit of sky in there and then we'll color the trees so this is Pacific Point. So this is a really bright blue and I don't want my sky quite as bright as that. Yes, it does. Just stamped is nice. So you can see here where I'm introducing the water onto the watercolour pencil. And then... I can just add this little bit of sky without it being too dark. So again, just picking up the colour on the tip of the brush to apply to my scene. And if you want to sort of create clouds you can just dab off sections of that you can leave little sections um, white there we go so then we've got our sky behind and obviously you can make that a sunset if you use you know oranges and pinks there go let's bring that down there a little bit Okay. And then finally I'm going to add a little bit of brown onto the, oh I stamped with stays on Nick. Hi Scylla. So it needs to be a solvent based ink or non water based ink. Okay. Um, let's add a little bit of colour to our fence. I've got my early espresso pen, so I'm just going to literally, watercolour pencil, not pen, <laughs> just apply a little bit, like so, and I know you can't see that in much detail, 
and then finally the trees and again you can go straight on here or you could pick up the colour from your sheet I'm going to use old olive for these shaped trees here like so you could also use blend pens if you don't want to do water colouring that would also work um, let's just add a little bit of water spread that around the nice thing about water colouring is you don't have to be exact all the work is done in the stamps for you let's pick up a little bit of a different green there. Would memento? Um, no, memento is a oops, is a water based ink. Uh, although, but, um, potentially, if it was completely dry, it might do. So you need to stamp and let it dry or heat set it. Um, you could just give it a go. Is the answer? Just try it out. So there we go. That's one lot done. Sweet little scene. Okay, let's have a go at the other one. So for the other one, I'm going to use um, our ink. So I'm still using our water painters, but I'm going to use inks on a block. So I have a block here. And let's see what have I got. I've got some balmy blue that I'm going to use for the sky. And you can mix and match. So you could use some watercolour and some ink. So there's a little bit of balmy blue. Morning, Linda. We have some Sahara sand, which I'm going to use for the stone. like so and let's just put this to one side slightly so I'm going to use a similar method let's do the stone first but this time I'm going to add some water to my block I don't want to lift it up because I don't want it going everywhere but hopefully you can see that and I can use my little palette here to see what that looks like and I'm just going to do a light wash over these steps like so it's like many of these things isn't it Catherine <laughs> it's um, if you can practice it it is good but I know what you mean so the thing is not to overwork it I think is to keep it fairly light so this is I've just colored that over so I've used some Sahara sand and this is all just stonework here and if it gets too wet again you can just lift it off and it's too if it's too dark and it's still wet you can do the same thing if it's too dark and it's drying apply a little bit of water with your brush and then lift it off with um, a cloth I prefer to use a linen cloth rather than um, a kitchen towel but you could use a piece of kitchen towel okay I'm going to color the door in different color so there's our stonework I'll just lift that up so you can see it and I will add I think a deeper 
um, a deeper colour to the edges. So, I'll find my ink pad. Might use a little bit of espresso. find a different one. Maybe soft suede. Espresso's in my bag packed ready for coffee and time. So I just got a little bit of soft suede. Just applying it onto that block. And then just picking up a little bit of that and just make it a little bit darker here and just use the guidelines that the artist has given you so this shading indicates it should be darker a little bit in here obviously a little archway in there And then just blend that out a little bit. There we go. Like so. Just to give it a little bit of contrast. And then just going over that to get the top and the edges of the steps. There we go. So there's our stonework. And then we've got um, flowers and pots in here. And I've got a front door. So let's add a bit of detail for the front door. I've actually got, and I might just use, what's this, cherry cobbler. Because it's much, such a small area, might just use this rather than ink. Just take it from the pan to get a bit more darker. Oops, half past ten. There we go. And then there's sorted flowers so all I'm doing because it's so fine I'm not going to try and fill in these individual plants so all I'm going to do is just dot in a little bit of red here and there and then I'll add a little bit of green there's a pot here like so Just add like that. Okay, while that's just drying, I'm going to add some sky. And this again is where this broad tip is really good because you can do a, an area fairly quickly and then you can use it flat on or sideways on. Like so. Like 
slip. And then I'll just ground the whole thing and then add a little bit of green. And I'm just waiting for these bits to dry so it doesn't um, go everywhere. <laughs> so I'm just going to ground this with a little bit of that mix of that stone. So don't be afraid to take off some of that colour. There we go. Like that. And I'm just lifting some of that colour. Like that. Hi Valerie. And then all that's left for me to do is add in a little bit of green. I think what I'm going to do is just use my um, pencil in here, like so, a little bit, just the smallest amount, a little bit in there, because it's such fine detail. I don't feel the need to go in and, and colour in each leaf. I'm just doing sort of all over like that. And I could use my painter just to blend that in a little. So I'm using the fine tip one here. So the water painters come as a pack of three. You get the fine. You get that broad one that I've been using today for quick areas. And then you get a wider tip. And there we go. So you could go back in and add more detail. You could add more depth of colour for the door, for example. I could take my... Um, cherry cobbler pencil and just go back in and add a bit of shading on there so it's up to you really but this one as the other one does is a really easy stamp to watercolor because it's it's a small stamp for starters <laughs> And there's a lot of small detail that you can literally brush over to um, to get a really good effect. Okay, so all I need to do for these is make sure I wipe off my block with my cloth. And then this just cloth goes in with my next lot of washing. Uh, not with the whites though. <laughs> And then we can just mount these onto a layer and then onto a base card. These are quite small, so I cut them as note card sizes. Um, a little bit of red would be useful for this one, maybe. Don't know, it might be a bit too bright. With granny apple green. And let me know what you think. Oh, this is a bit more tricky, isn't it? It's quite nice with the blue. Or I've got a couple of browns there. That looks better. I think or soft suede not much in it I think I prefer the darker early espresso layer 
and then this one I've gone for Granny Apple Green because I've used Granny Apple Green pen here. Let's just have a look at Sosway though. Oh, that's quite nice too, actually. Okay. So I've got two note cards and envelopes. She says, hopefully, yes. Two. So this is one of the presets if you need landscape with green. Oh yes. This is one of the um, presets and celebration. Soft sway with steps, excellent. And what do we think? Green or espresso? Let's see if I've got our garden green. The darker one might be better. What shade is spruce? Fran says espresso. That's the wrong green. Which one do you like, Nick? <laughs> That's the only problem with the comments. Is that they're delayed. So. <laughs> so I've got Granny Apple, Shaded Spruce and Early Espresso. Okay, let's pop this one down while we're waiting so ideally you want this to be completely dry okay and we're going to add it doesn't matter which ink you use um, ink this is glue this is Monday morning isn't it <laughs> okay and I'm just applying plenty of glue to this and pop it on here and I'm I haven't put a sentiment on because I'm going to leave this. Um, you could have a small sentiment like for you or thinking of you, but I think with these cards, these are also nice just as note cards. So that's going to go on to there. So we've got Granny Apple, Soft Suede and Espresso, a couple for Granny Apple. Okay, let's pop that on. And then this layer doesn't need as much adhesive. But I do like to apply more adhesive to the layer that's had the water colouring going on because it has absorbed some of the water. You don't want it bubbling up. Oh, Fran, so the size I stamped on was three inches by four and a half. And then this layer is three and a quarter by four and three quarters. And this is on a note card, which is three and a half by five to finish with. So let's discount that one. So what do we think? That's OK. Let's see what it's like with the layer. So that's one option. And then that's the other. Yep, I think the granny apple. I like that. It's a bit warmer, isn't it, from that point of view. So again, this layer, three by four and a half. Just making sure I'm applying more adhesive than I would normally just keep it nice and flat because you don't want it peeling up as it dries out so that's on our layer it does make it look more summery doesn't it for sure Touch 
to my fingers behind. There we go. So as I said, I'm going to leave those without sentiments. There we are. For the minute. I could add a small thinking of you or just for you at the bottom. But I did quite like these as just note cards. So you could do a set of these and pop them in a little box. And gift it to someone or just wrap them up in some ribbon with some envelopes um, so there we go so this is in the country um, from our celebration brochure so you can get this for free with a 45 pound order between now and the end of February yes I agree Fran I think they look pretty without a sentiment um, and suitable for you know anybody great for retirement or just for thinking of you somebody who's moved house um, all sorts of combinations um, great for men as well as for women so there we go thank you so much this is the celebration brochure so I will be working my way through what I should have done is started at the front isn't it but never mind um, so let's have a quick vote on what you might like to see tomorrow so we've already done the adorable owls so we've got thanks a bunch we've got this slightly weird set of carrots so that's one option we've done the dainty flowers papers um and let's choose so that's a stamp set thanks a bunch or let's have this is another option the papers favored flowers designer series paper so pop in the comments your preference this matches up with a stamp set um fragrance flowers and then the other option is thanks a bunch so um, let me know what you'd like to see tomorrow and then we're working our way right the way through. Hopefully I've got enough. Yes, I should have enough to do one every day of this week. So carrots or flowers. That's your choice for tomorrow. <laughs> OK, so thank you so much, everybody. I do hope you have a great day ahead um, or evening ahead, depending on where you're from. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm off to pack all of my class in the box contents. I've got the boxes on one side. I've got all the contents on my side table here in the window. So after a cup of coffee. Oh yes, Fran, somebody did use the carrot fill for grass. That was Patty Bennett. And also I've seen trees made with the carrots as well. So we'll give them a go. Anyway, have a great day, everyone. Do take care. I will be back tomorrow evening at 7. I have card class in the afternoon and the class in the boxes will all be going out. Um, they'll be they're booked for collection tomorrow morning. So if you've taken part in my class in the box this month, watch out for your post. And I look forward to catching up with you all really soon. Thanks for your time. Oh, Silly so says flowers. So we've got one vote for flowers. <laughs> So at the moment, flowers are in the wind. Thank you so much, everyone. Do take care. Enjoy your day. Thanks for joining me and keep crafting. Bye for now.